A gene is a section of DNA, a length of DNA that codes for a protein. A protein is a chain of amino acids, and there are two important genes that we're going to talk about. One is on chromosome 2P. This gene is called, the name of the gene is SLC3A1. SLC is solute carrier. It's going to transport something from one side of a membrane to the other side. SLC3A1 codes for a protein that's usually called RBAT. It's the heavy component of the cysteine transporter. And RBAT stands for related to basic amino acid transporter. Originally, it was RAT, basic amino acid transporter. And they wanted people to know that they had the same molecule, too. So they took the RAT part out and made the R stand for related, uh, which was a kind. Chromosome 19 has the other gene, SLC7A9. And this protein is the light component. It's an amino acid transporter, that's what AT stands for, of neutral and dibasic amino acids. That's what these superscripts mean. These are the two proteins that we're going to talk about. So these two, the heavy component and the light component, come together and form the cysteine transporter. The gene for cystinuria, or any, uh, one of these genes, is carried by about one out of 170 people. And originally, you may be familiar with a classification that these were types 1, 2, and 3. Probably now, we're going, to t we're going to talk about types A and B. So this was based really not on the patient, but on the patient's parents. The patient's parents' cysteine excretion. The parents are heterozygotes. That means the parents have one abnormal gene and one normal gene. The patient with cystinuria has two abnorm abnormal genes. Then, since there are two abnormal genes, that's a homozygote. The patients are homozygotes. The parents must be heterozygotes. The heterozygotes carrier of one mutated gene and have one normal gene. If the parent has normal urinary cysteine, then the patient has type 1 cystinuria. That's a recessive gene. The, it's recessive meaning that the parent who carries one gene has no abnormality in cysteine transport, does not have urine. But there are parents who have high cysteine values, high enough to be measurable as abnormal, but not high enough in most cases to cause stones. Those are type, what usually were called, what in the past were called type 2 or type 3. So some people have classified now that the distinction between what was called type 2 and type 3 is not so easy to make and maybe not even relevant. So people are calling this type 1 and non-type 1, or A and B. There's different uh, researchers who have used different classifications. The point is, Let's call it A and B for now. Now, this is a little complicated, but here's a father and here's a mother. And in what most, and this is the more common uh, kind of presentation in, in the United States, this cystinuria type 1 or type A is an abnormality in that SLC3A1, the RBAT protein, a father and a mother. And they have four children. And this is really, whether they have four children or not, the, obviously this is a statistical issue. How many, what percent of their children will be affected? This arrow, this heavy red, indicates that this person has two abnormal genes, one from the father, one from the mother. These are heterozygotes. That's what the hatched uh, filling means, the, the, the stripes. These are people who have one abnormal gene. So 25% of the children will have a high amount of cysteine in the urine. But notice that the other children, this one has no abnormal genes, 25% of, of their children. 50% will be carriers, and they will not have abnormal amounts of cysteine, just like their parents. Normal is less than 100 micromoles, or 25 milligrams of cysteine in the urine. So this is the more common so-called recessive gene. 25% of the children will be affected by cystinuria. They'll have two abnormal genes a large amount of cysteine in the urine. Carriers, the parents, will not have abnormal amounts of cysteine. The other type, the non-type 1 or type B, are genes that could be considered dominant. It could be that one gene is enough to have stones. Most people will not have stones, but it's, it's possible. And as far as I can tell, I haven't seen a patient who had one gene and had stones. So it's, it's, it's going to be relatively unusual. This is a, an abnormality in the other gene, the SLC7A9. Here, both the parents do not have stones, but they both have increased amounts of cysteine. 
they're above 100 micromoles of cysteine per gram of creatinine. So both the parents have abnormal amounts of cysteine in the urine, but each of them has only one abnormal gene. If those two abnormal genes come together in one individual, 25%, that person is going to be uh, abnormal. But the children who have one gene from the parents will also have high amounts of cysteine in the urine. So that's why this is considered potentially a dominant gene in the sense that some people will have enough cysteine in the urine to have a stone. They'll certainly have an abnormal amount of cysteine. This is a different, a different gene problem. And here, if you tested the parents and knew that they did not have cysteine stones but had high amounts of cysteine in the urine, you would know that this family was affected by a different genetic heritage than the other uh, family that I showed you before. And then it's, of course, it's possible that the whole family has got different kinds of genes, that the parents have different genetic uh, abnormalities. So this mother has a normal uh, cysteine gene and an abnormal cysteine gene, but she winds up with a, a low amount because she's a type 1 gene carrier. She has the RBAT mutation, but her husband has a high amount of cysteine in the urine because he's a type 2 or type 3 carrier of an SLC7A9 mutation. So when they get together, 25% of their children will have these two abnormal genes coming together. This child now has two different abnormal genes, so it's, it's mixed. This child has no abnormal genes. This child has one abnormal gene from the mother and has a normal amount of cysteine. This child has the same as his father. He's got that abnormal gene that leads to cysteine in the urine, but it's not high enough to give him stones.